Okay, let's get started with Talend. In part one, we looked at extracting data from a legacy database. We're using Sean Landman's baseball statistics database loaded into MySQL. Also in part one, we looked at transforming the results of our database query into XML using the advanced file output XML component. For part two, we'll cover zipping, deleting, and FTPing of data along with context variables that make this possible in a real production environment. Let's start part two by moving over to our demonstration job that we constructed in part one. And if we inspect our XML component, we'll see that we have a, a file name here that's configured for our local Windows environment. <clears throat> in production, we're likely to be conducting this process out on a dedicated server somewhere. It might be a different OS like Linux and it will have the resources and disk necessary to move large volumes of data. Um, so we need a way to both do development locally but then parameterize and export this job um, for production use. And the way we do that is by using context variables. Context variables are a way to create uh, variable names for the different component configurations that then you can um, have a default context that's used in development but then set up context for other environments. So let's create some variables. We need a variable for our XML output and we'll call that XML file name. Later in part two we're going to cover zipping up or archiving our XML so we'll need an archive file name. Additionally, we have our output directory. And again, later in part two, we'll cover FTPing our zip to another server. And to do that, we'll have a remote directory. All right, I'm using Java variable naming conventions. You can use any convention you want here, but it is being compiled to Java behind the scenes. So let's give our variables some values. So our uh, default values will be batting.xml for our XML file name, batting.zip for our zip file name. Our local out directory is c colon slash data out batting. Even though we're on a Windows box, I'm using forward slashes because that will work in Java. And I'm also <clears throat> including the trailing slash so that when I use the context variable and concatenate it with the file name, I don't have to insert a, or concatenate in a slash. Eventually, we're going to be looking at FTPing our files. So we're going to need a remote directory, which would be something like home root import staging. Okay, for now we're just going to work with our default context. Uh, using this icon over here, you can add additional context, and at the end of part two we'll look at creating an additional context for our production environment. Okay, so how do we actually use these variables then once they're created? Let's go back over and look at our XML component configuration where we have our hard-coded file path. So we'll just go ahead and delete our hard-coded file path and we'll insert <clears throat> our context variables instead. I'm gonna type CON and then use control space to do Eclipse code assist and I'll, I'll be able to see my context variables in the list. Uh, the first variable we'll need is the file name. Actually, the first variable we'll need is the outdoor 
and then we're going to concatenate that plus with the file name. All right, let's try the job now and see if our context variables are working. Okay, we can see that our job is run through the same amount of rows and it has uh, no errors and likely our batting file has been updated. So, um, so we can see that our context variables are correct, at least for our local environment. If we really want to use our job in production and we're moving a lot of data around the network, it might be useful to zip or archive our files before uh, they're moved. To do this, we can use a component in Talend called File Archive. I'm going to go ahead and add the file archive component to my palette or to my job. And I'm going to connect it to my advanced file output component with a trigger condition of on component OK. This is because we want uh, the processing of our query and our XML to complete before we attempt to zip the output file. Let's look at the configuration of the archive component. We can see here that the archive component requires uh, a directory. And since we've set up our context variables, we can use those across components. And we'll reuse uh, our out directory context variable for the directory. Also, it requires an archive file which is really uh, the path, it looks like, based on the example. So we will do, again, context outdoor plus context archive file name. Doesn't hurt to create directories if they don't exist. We're using UTF-8 file encoding. Uh, we won't have any subdirectories to include in the zip because we're zipping a, specifically a file. So you can uncheck that. And let's see if this works. All right, we received no errors and it looks like it was a, a good run. So let's go ahead and look at our out directory. Now we can see that in addition to our XML document, which is 46 megabytes, we now have a much compressed zip file too. Now that we're successfully zipping or archiving our output file, we might want to delete the large zipped XML from the disk. Again, processing large volumes of data, we may need to be uh, careful with our disk. So there's a useful component for that as well called T file delete. I'm going to drag that component into my job. We don't want to delete our source file until it's zipped. So again, I'm going to do a trigger condition of on component OK to connect the two components. Then we'll look at the component configuration. It's quite simple. It just requires a file name. So let's again use our context variables to configure that. So we're going to be deleting our XML after we've successfully zipped it. Now let's try the job. OK, again, a successful run with no errors. <clears throat> so let's go and look at our output directory. And we can see that uh, we no longer have our XML at the end of the job just our compressed zip. 
Once we've successfully zipped our XML, we may want to stage it out to another box for loading. And for that, I'll briefly show you the FTP component in Talent. You can see here we have uh, several FTP components. For this purpose, we're going to use FTP put. Drag that into my job. Again, using a com on, a, on component OK trigger, I'm going to connect it to the file archive component. I'm connecting it to the file archive component and not the delete component because we only need the archive process to finish before we can begin FTP. Uh, it's interesting to note that Talon supports essentially branching or parallel processing here because um, of the way that you can just hang a process off one stage of the main process while the main process continues to finish. Let's look at configuring the FTP component. The FTP component requires credentials for the remote system. This is probably the most difficult part of getting your FTP component going. It requires the correct credentials, the correct host name and port. It requires your remote box to be configured with the port open and FTP running. And we get more into the meat of the configuration. It requires a local directory where the file will reside. And so for that, we'll use, again, our context variable for the out directory. And it requires the context variable for our remote directory. So we need to know where we want to put it on the remote box. We can choose to overwrite or not. Often you'll be using SFTP instead of FTP. So you just check SFTP support. And then finally, it requires a file mask. The file mask can be in a, a regex expression or a, a glob expression. Um, in our case, we're just going to name the file. So here we can use our context variables, and we're using our archive file name. The name on the remote system is also going to be the same. And then we'll set it to uh, use UTF-8 encoding. That covers uh, the configuration of an FTP component in our job. Once we're successfully zipping and FTPing, etc., we might want to start the process of testing this in a test environment and eventually we'll need to use it in a production environment. So circling back to context variables, let's look at how to add a context for another environment. To add a context for another environment, we click the Configure Context button, click New, and then give our new context a name. I'm going to call this ETL Server. Click OK, and now we have another column in our values table where we can configure different values for another environment. Most of these value, the naming values will be the same. This path would be different if we're on a Linux environment. Home, root, data, out. Once we have our remote box context variable set, we can look at exporting the job so we can try it in another environment. And to do that, I select my job in the tree, right click, and click build job. This is a little confusing because in, uh, intuitively I would think it would be an export job, but build job, um, we haven't saved, so let's just quickly cancel and save. Okay, let's go back and select build job and look at our dialog. So this dialog is going to create a zip. I can choose where to put it on my local system. This zip is going to contain all the jars as well as scripts for Windows and Unix environments so that we have a command line interface for running our job in another environment. And one of the interesting 
things we can do here is we can select which environment we want to export for. So here I would select ETL server. I would get a zip. I can move that zip out onto the ETL server, extract it, and run one script to kick off my job and, and test it and eventually run it that way in production.